liquid B in a beaker and above the liquid you have gas A and suppose the gas itself can dissolve into liquid partially so there will be A dissolved into liquid B as it as A is in liquid the reaction can take place and reaction would be A plus B to get AB this is another species and so what is happening here what is happening here if the rate of reaction is not extremely fast if the rate is not extremely fast that's what what does it mean if the rate is not fast if the rate is not fast that means when A meets with B the reaction might not be complete yet so therefore there will be A left from the reaction so that A can diffuse further okay on the other hand if the reaction is extremely fast then when A meets B A will be gone right away at the same time we will be B will be consumed as well okay now let's go back to look into the system right now what is our system liquid or gas it depends it depends on what you want to know if you want to know consumption rate of A by the reaction then the system is supposed to be liquid because it is where the, the reaction takes place okay so in our case here the liquid would be considered as a system so therefore there will be concentration difference of A because above here around the surface concentration of A is supposed to be the greatest down here further A is consumed along the way so therefore there will be concentration gradient along this vertical direction right so as I said earlier wherever you have difference in concentration that's where you're supposed to consider as a system so right now liquid is a system okay now how many species do we have in our system three can we use fixed law no because fixed law is applied for two species only for binary okay all right so what should we do let's start by conducting shell balance or or before we going that suppose a is carbon dioxide b is sodium hydroxide we know that a plus b a b would be a sodium carbonate okay which is solid the sodium carbonate is solid right now normally we are all familiar with the fact that sodium hydroxide is not pure we normally prepare sodium hydroxide as solution okay so in reality you may have another species C and C here is water so in here you have instead of liquid B suppose normally you have solution of B in C okay that would make our system even more complicated in the sense that we have more species in the system right now if if I go back one step if the reaction is slow then A would have a chance to go through the boundaries here downward toward the bottom of the beaker 
because the reaction is slow. Okay. The concentration difference around here on the surface, concentration of A is higher than concentration of A down here. So therefore, the difference in concentration is the driving force for the diffusion of A downward. On the other hand, if the reaction, I mean, if the reaction is instantaneously fast, that means once A meets with B, both A and B would react to form AB right away. So that means around the interface here, there will be no A or B. What you have would be just a solvent and the product AB, right? In that case, if the reaction is extremely fast, at short term, at short period of time, A diffuse react with B. So area around here would have C only and the product AB, right? Because both A and B are wrapped. They are gone. The, the reactants are gone. They are all consumed. What you have left is A on the gas, B in the liquid here. As time goes by, for longer time, what, what is happening here? Still, A is still able to dissolve into liquid or in the solvent. So therefore, A would constantly dissolve into the, this shaded area, right? So once A is dissolved in here, you will have molecule of A in this area. But this time, there is no B at all in this shaded area. So therefore, I mean, where A meets B is the dotted line here, right? This is the interface or the, the region where A meets with B. This is reaction front. So as time goes, the reaction front is supposed to move downward because A would diffuse down here once it meets with B. B around here would be consumed. Once B is consumed, this reaction front recedes downward. So reaction front may be going down here as time goes longer and longer. So around here you have A dissolved in solvent C. Down here you have B dissolved in solvent C. Reaction takes place only on the interface because the reaction is extremely fast. As soon as they both meet, then reaction turn them into product right away. Okay? So this kind of problem is no longer considered as steady state problem. This problem is unsteady state problem because your system change with respect to time. It will be considered in chapter 20. But here in our example, the reaction is slow. So therefore, A still have a chance to pass through it and form continuous concentration profile. In that case, reaction front, there's no reaction front because reaction takes place everywhere, right? Within the liquid here, reaction takes place everywhere. So therefore, this problem can still be considered a steady state problem. All right? Do you understand? The situation are different. Okay? So, we will focus our attention on this problem, on steady state problem. So, as long as we can assume that A dissolve in B uniformly across the cross-section area of the system, we can say that our shell can look something like this. 
you have A dissolved through, through the liquid into the shell and dissolved from the shell out. Okay? So you can have Na, let's call this direction Z direction. NaZ at Z and NaZ at Z plus delta Z. Okay? If I say this one is C equal to zero, and there at the bottom is Z equal to L, that's our system. So if you take the balance in minus out plus generation equal to accumulation of zero at steady state, what is in? Normally in would be the flux multiplied by cross-section area. Flux in is NAZ at Z times the cross-section area, suppose it is S. For output, it would be the same thing at Z plus delta Z times S. Is there any generation? Is generation term zero? Again, in order to answer this question, you need to consider the shell itself, whether or not there is reaction within the shell. In this case, there is. Okay? So generation cannot be zero. So what can we represent the generation term? How can we represent the generation term? We have not deal with this generation term before. In both examples we, we did last couple times, there is no generation term. If you look at each term, the unit of each term is what? What is the unit of this term? It's supposed to be mole of A per time per square meter. This is the flux. Na multiplied by the area which is square meter. <coughs> so therefore the the total unit is supposed to be mole of A per time. That unit is supposed to be applicable for generation term as well. So how can we represent generation term in the unit of mole per mole of A per second? That's the rate of reaction, right? So rate of reaction, from your knowledge of kinetics, rate of reaction is represented by mole of reactant, in this case A, consume per unit time, per unit volume, right? The rate is per unit volume. So therefore, you need to multiply by volume. Right? If the rate of reaction is represented by Ra, or if it is first order, is Kca. What is the sign here? Minus. It's supposed to be minus. Don't be confused. In the kinetics, normally kinetics represent rate of reaction like this. KCA. Right? This is from kinetics. Physically, it means rate of disappearance of A equal to this psi. So if you want to get the mole of A consumed per meters cubed per second, that's KCA and you put minus sign in here because of the consumption. Okay? And in the textbook, it has triple prime, represent per unit volume. Okay? Last time we have double prime, which is representing per unit area of the catalyst.